have a nice time to all in this class we will continue our discussion on proof methods today we will study about existence proofs and counter examples existence proofs suppose we want to prove a theorem of the form there exists x p of x the theorem says that there is an element x in the universe of discourse satisfying the property p of x such theorems can be proved using existence proofs Suppose we want to prove that there are positive integers which can be expressed as sum of cubes of two integers in two different ways. Actually, we know the existence of such an integer, and one seven two nine is such an integer. Here we provide an element which satisfies the condition of the result. One seven two nine can be expressed as twelve cube plus one cube, and also in the form ten cube plus nine cube. so this integer can be expressed as a sum of cubes in two different ways so we conclude that there are positive integers which satisfying this result such proofs are called constructive existence proofs we directly provides the element which satisfies the condition of the theorem but in non constructive existence proofs we will not provide the element directly but we prove the existence of such an element in an indirect way let us go through an example suppose we want to prove that there is a prime greater than 3 so we have to establish the existence of a prime greater than 3 here we will provide a non constructive proof for this result if the only primes are 2 and 3 that is if there is no prime greater than 3 then every integer greater than or equal to 2 can be expressed as a product of powers of 2 and 3 in particular if we take 25 then 25 equal to 2 raised to i into 3 raised to j where i and j are some integers but this is not possible because neither 2 nor 3 divides 25 2 and 3 are not divisors of 25 so we cannot express 25 as a product of powers of 2 and 3 but any integer can be written as a product of powers of prime numbers and here we assumed that the only primes are 2 and 3 so this is not possible therefore there are primes greater than 3 here we doesn't give such an element which is a prime greater than 3 directly but we proved the existence of such a prime in an indirect method such proofs are called non constructive existence proofs let us go through some problems proof by existence method show that there are integers x such that x square equal to x here we will provide an element x satisfying the result x square equal to x that is we will use constructive existence proof so we choose x equal to 1 then x square equal to x equal to 1 so we proved that there are integers x such that x square equal to x second one prove that there are integers x such that mod x equal to x here also we will use constructive existence proof and we can give x as 1 again then mod x equal to 1 equal to x here also we provide an element in the universe of discourse satisfying the expression mod x equal to x next one prove that there are infinitely many integers that can be expressed as sum of cubes of two integers in two different ways we know that 1729 is such an integer since 1729 can be written as 12 cube plus 1 cube it can also be written as 10 cube plus 9 cube but we are sure that there are infinitely such integers like 1729 which can be expressed as sum of cubes of two integers in two different ways so we take any integer n and we multiply n cube to both sides of this equation so we get then we get 1729 into n cube equal to 12 cube into n cube plus 1 cube into n cube that is this equal to 12 n the whole cube plus 1 into n is n itself so we have n cube so here the number 1729 into n cube can be expressed as 12 n whole cube plus n cube also 1729 into n cube can be written as 10 cube into n cube plus 9 cube into n cube here also we multiply n cube to both sides of this equation so actually this equal to 10 n whole cube 
plus 9n whole cube. So this is another way of writing 1729n cube as a sum of cube of two integers. Therefore the integer 1729 into n cube can be expressed as sum of cubes of two integers in two different ways. Here we may put n as any positive integer. So there are infinitely such integers of the form 1729 into n cube where n equal to 1, 2, 3 etc. satisfying the result of the theorem. Therefore there are infinitely such integers which can be expressed as sum of cubes of two integers in two different ways. And the one the equation x square plus y square equal to z square has infinitely many solutions. Here we provide the integers x, y, z as x equal to 2 into s into t, y equal to s square minus t square and z equal to s square plus t square. For s and t are integers greater than 0. And we consider x square plus y square. It becomes 2st whole square that is 4s square t square plus s square minus t square whole square. Applying a minus b whole square formula here, we have s raised to 4 minus 2s square t square plus t raised to 4. Combining the like terms s square t square, we get s raised to 4 plus 2s square t square plus 2t raised to 4. And this can be written as s square plus t square whole square. Because s square plus t square whole square is s raised to 4 plus 2s square t square plus t raised to 4. And actually this is s square plus t square is z. So we have this equal to z square. Hence the expressions 2st s square minus t square and s square plus t square satisfies the equation x square plus y square equal to z square. Or in other words this equation has infinitely many solutions as we vary the selection of s and t. For example if we choose s equal to 1, t equal to 2 then x equal to 2 into s into t that is 4, y equal to s square minus t square that is 1 minus 4 that is minus 3 and z equal to s square plus t square that is 1 plus 4 that is equal to 5. And clearly here x square plus y square is equal to 4 square that is 16 plus minus 3 square that is 9 is equal to 25. This is actually equal to z square. So as we select s and t as per our convenience, we will get different solutions for x square plus y square equal to z square. Therefore, there are infinitely many solutions for this equation. This is one of the existence proof of the theorem. Finally, let me have some remarks on counter examples of some theorems. For example, suppose we want to prove a theorem of the form for all x p of x. The statement means that for all the elements in the universe of discourse, the predicate p of x is true. If we can provide at least one x satisfying the result negation p of x, that is if there exists at least one element in the universe of discourse which doesn't satisfy this relation, then actually this statement is false because here says that all the elements in the universe of discourse are satisfying p of x. Here we know by de Morgan's law negation of for all x p of x is logically equivalent to there exists x negation p of x. So if you want to prove that some theorem of the form for all x p of x is false, it is enough to show that negation p of x is true for at least one x in the universe of discourse. Such an element x is called a counter example. For example, Swiss mathematician Leonard Euler gives a formula to find the prime numbers. You can see that if you give values for n equal to 1, 2, 3, etc. 40, this function p of n gives a prime number. Suppose we want to prove or disprove this theorem. We can disprove this theorem by providing a counter example for this result. For example, if n equal to 41, what happens? P of n becomes 41 square minus 41 plus 41. Minus 41 and plus 41 cancels and we will get 41 square. It is not a prime number because it is 41 into 41. So when n equal to 41, this function P of n doesn't give a prime number. So this result is not true. In order to disprove the result, we produce a counter example. 
n equal to 41. Around 1640, famous mathematician Fermat conjectured that f of n equal to 2 raised to 2 raised to n plus 1 are primes for all non-negative integers n. A conjecture means that it may or may not true. It is not a proved statement. Later, Leonard Euler showed that this conjecture is false. For that, he provided a counter example for this result. Actually, this result is true for n equal to 0, 1, 2, 3 and 4. Here, f of 0 equal to 2 raised to 2 raised to 0 plus 1 that is 2 raised to 1 plus 1 that is equal to 3. f of 1 equal to 2 raised to 2 plus 1 that is equal to 5. f of 2 equal to f of 2 equal to 2 raised to 2 square that is 4 plus 1 2 raised to 4 is 16 16 plus 1 is 17 likewise f of 3 equal to 257 and f of 4 equal to 65537 actually all these numbers are prime numbers but when n equal to 5 Euler showed that f of 5 can be written as 641 into 6700417 so that it is not a prime number this is a counter example for this conjecture so this conjecture is not true for all non-negative integers n actually for n equal to 0 1 2 3 4 f of n gives prime numbers and these primes are known as Fermat primes but this function doesn't give prime numbers for all values of n that is proved using this counter example likewise in order to disprove a statement we can provide a counter example let us do some problems give counter examples to disprove the given statements first statement is absolute value of every real number is positive if I take the real number x equal to 0, then absolute value of 0 equal to 0. It is not positive. Therefore, the statement is false. Another problem, every prime number is odd. If I take x equal to 2, 2 is a prime number. But it is not odd. Therefore, here also the statement is false. Another one. There exists x p of x implies there exists unique x p of x. So to disprove this statement, let the universe of discourse be set of integers and let the predicate p of x be x square equal to 1. Then there exists x p of x is true because there exists an integer x equal to 1 such that x square equal to 1. But there exists unique x p of x is not true since x equal to 1 and x equal to minus 1 satisfies p of x. For x equal to 1 or x equal to minus 1 x square equal to 1. So the existence of x is not unique there. So here there exists x p of x is true but there exists unique x p of x is not true. Therefore the statement is false. Hence, by citing this particular example, which is a counter example, we can disprove this statement. Okay, with this class, I am winding up the lecture series on theory of logic.